All right, we got a quick video here on simplifying radicals. So this comes up when we're dealing with quadratic equations. And if we're solving using either square roots or the quadratic uh, formula, something like that, where we have a radical. And if, if we don't want to get a decimal answer, we want to simplify that radical. So uh, we'll get into some examples about how that works. Before that, though, just a quick little note about simplifying. All right, so, so you have actually been simplifying for years. Um, for instance, let's just say that we have a fraction here. We have 6 over 8. Now, there's, there's two ways if we wanted to, let's say you got an answer of 6 over 8, <clears throat> and, and you wanted to give a, a final answer. Well, one way would be to, to make a decimal out of it. If I took the 6 and divided it by 8, I will get, in decimal form, I would get 0.75. Okay, so if they, if they are fine with, with a, a decimal answer, 0.75 would be it. But sometimes you want your answer as a reduced fraction. So in that case, we, we check out the numerator and denominator, see what we can reduce both of them by or divide both of them by. And so we can divide both of them by 2, so that gives us 3 over 4. Okay, so, so both of them are the same numerical answer, so 0.75. That's the same value as three fourths. It's just that sometimes we want the your answer in a simplified form. So if they said uh, leave your answer in simplified fractional form, that's what's going on there. Well, now with with radicals, sometimes that can happen as well. Okay. So for instance, with if let's just say we're doing some work and we had to find the square root of eight at the very end. So let's say it said x squared equals eight. So you want to find uh, what x equals. Okay, you take the square root of eight. And if you do that on the calculator, you can get a decimal. And that would turn out on your calculator to be 2.83 rounded. Okay. So if you are, if the teacher is okay with decimal form, 2.83, that's what you get. You plug into the calculator and get it. However, sometimes we want this in simplified radical form. And it's, again, just kind of like the, the, the decimal and the fraction here. So it's going to be a different form of it. Um, and, and there are times when simplified radical form is more useful. Okay, so the radical form of this simplified would not be radical 8. It's going to be 2 radical 2. Now, how that happens is the point of today's lesson, and we'll be quick about it. But, but just to be clear about, you know, what we're doing, uh, we have seen this before when we want answers in different forms and specifically when we want answered in simplified form okay so that's what we're going to be getting into in this lesson now a way to to simplify um, a radical uh, a big part of this is knowing your perfect squares and if you have those down pat you're in good shape my guess is most of you do so perfect squares are just any number uh, that if I took the square root of it, I would get a whole number. So the list is very simple. We can just square each, you know, I mean, the list is really infinite. But the ones that we'll be most concerned with are going to be 4, right? If I, if I take the square root of 4, I get 2, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. And the list does go on, 121, 144. Um, but but it's going to be, we're going to be on the lookout for these numbers. Because again, if I take the square root of any of these numbers, I do get a whole number. And that's what we're looking to get when we simplify radicals. As many whole numbers out as possible, we might have to leave something in the radical. Uh, like in our last example, we left a 2 in there. But, uh, but the more we can kind of be on the lookout for these guys, they will help us out. So to simplify a radical now, we'll just go through a few examples. Okay, so our first example here I'll just say one, is let's just say we had the following. We had the square root of 28. Okay, now um, that is not a perfect square. All right, it's not in this list. If we took the square root of it on the calculator, we would get a decimal. But if the teacher wants you to leave it in simplified radical form, we got to reduce it like a fraction, okay? So the way we would do this is the following. We think, okay, 
uh, can I split this up? Can I break this up uh, multiplication-wise? So something times something else. And you could do 4 times 7. You can do 14 times 2. Okay? Um, but we want to do it in a way that we get one of these numbers out. So ideally, you think to yourself, all right, what's, what's, a, what's a perfect square number that I can divide this by? And I'm going to say that's, a, that's 4. So if I broke this down to 4 times 7 is 28, then radical 28 can be broken down to radical 4 times radical 7, like that. And the benefit of this is that now I have the square root of 4. Well, I know the square root of 4 is 2. Okay? I would try to simplify the 7, but I can't break that up in any other way that's going to give me any of these perfect squares. So I'm going to just leave that as is. Okay, so therefore, if I had the square root of 28 or a radical 28, they both mean the same thing, um, I can reduce that down to 2 radical 7. And really what we're trying to do is reduce the number inside the radical as much as possible. Okay, let's try another one. So let's say in uh, example 2, we have the square root of 50 now. Okay, so you can think about this now. How can we break up, again, the square root of 50 is not a perfect square. Uh, 49 is really close to it, but that doesn't help us. So just think now, I want to break up 50 to something times something else, and if I can get a perfect square out of it, that would be ideal. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, what about 5 times 10? That's true. You can do that and continue to break it down. Uh, it's going to be a longer process. It's best, though, if we can get a perfect square out. So... If you're thinking, well, what about 25 times 2? That's really the most effective way to go about it. Okay, Again, 5 times 10 will eventually get you there, but 25 times 2 is going to be better. So the, the benefit here, the square root of 25, that is 5. No longer in the radical anymore. And then the radical 2, I can't do anything with that, so I'm going to leave it as radical 2 like that. Okay, So the square root of 50 is just 5 radical 2. All right, and we'll take a look at one more. And let's say we have the square root of 300. Okay. Now, again, you might be thinking, okay, I can break it up and multiply two numbers together. What about like, you know, 30 times 10 or 2 times 150? And those will work if you just keep going. But if we want to go as quickly as possible, which I think we do, let's just think of, a, a perfect square that can go into 300, well, that's 100. So if I take out 100 times 3, this is going to work now. I take the square root of 100, that is 10. Square root of 3, I can't break down anymore. So that is just square root of 3 or radical 3. And then we are all done. Okay. So uh, we will see some more questions like this that involve Within solving quadratic equations, you're going to need to simplify the radical, and that's the process how we'll do it. And we'll do much more in class, and if you have any questions at that point, you can let me know. All right, thanks.